So I've been witnessing how the transformation of the city and also because of the amazing weather that we had in San Diego and because uh, we are part of a, what I call the Transfrontier Metropolis. Uh, if you can see that, that from Ensenada, Mexico, Tijuana, San Diego, Los Angeles, all the way to San Francisco, there are almost 40 million people living with um, an amazing economy. And uh, California is still the, the, the center for design improvements. It is the Silicon Valley and all the industries around LA and San Diego, the aerospace and the innovation. So the, the growth will be uh, something that we need to get used to. Uh, we are expecting 1 million new people living here in the next 20, 30 years. We don't know exactly. And uh, this is specifically San Diego. It's an amazing, it's an amazing uh, a point where you have the ocean, uh, where you have another country, where you have the desert and you have the snow and you have a metropolis like Los Angeles. So with an amazing weather. So rents will be growing up. It'll be more difficult for people. So. The This became one of the best vacation cities in the United States. And people came here and, and bought a lot of property, but didn't live here. They came here two weeks a year, enjoyed the property, and then a lot of them sat vacant uh, for the rest of the year. The mindset was that this wasn't really a, a, a serious town, that this was a play town. This was some place that you could go and have a great time and, and a wonderful vacation. Now it's the eighth largest major metropolitan city in the United States, but it was simply a vacation town. How do you reconcile that and understand that the style of housing that was anticipated to be needed was more vacation style housing? In San Diego, we have gone through cycles where we have shortages of housing and then abundance of housing. Housing costs have continually gone up and the further out you go, perhaps the, the more, less expensive they get. But people have been very concerned about housing. Housing has always been an issue. Housing in neighborhoods has always been a, a great concern in San Diego. What kind of housing gets built, who it's for, where it is, and so on. We find that there's plenty of housing. There's plenty of single family housing units out there that San Diego has built over the last 50 years. And there's plenty of apartment buildings that are very nice apartment buildings. And all of that is unavailable to a third of our population. It costs more to build the same building for a different tenant. And, and there's something inherently wrong with that. I had a project in Little Italy uh, so like a mid-rise building and I discovered that San Diego had many sort of like a gated communities so I live in one quite close to to Ikea and then I decided that uh, it was not interesting because it was sort of like isolated. I did the first one called housing the next one million and how to come up with different kinds of affordable units um, that you know could cost less so uh, it was all about uh, housing uh, uh, affordability in the, the context of how's the next one million but In the spirit of another million people coming to San Diego by 2050, half of those have been projected to be born here, and the other half are projected to come here because of, you know, that vacation mindset, that education reality, uh, coming to San Diego to be here from other states.
I think people migrate here for a couple of reasons. Some come because they're in the service and you know, that brings people here. Come because of jobs, the high tech industry. Um, leads all these people who come up with all these in inventions or the uh, medical uh, uh, research. So that brings a lot of people here. And then people come here for the weather. It's, you know, it's a nice place to live. You're in the process of adjusting something that was already predicted 20 years ago. How people see housing affordability and um, you know, again, the American dream is really, uh, you know, the three bedroom, one and a half, two bath, uh, kind of either ranch, ranch style or, you know, small colonial style or, you know, kind of a traditional style of house that they built in the 50, uh, 60s or 70s. We, we've been witnessing how corporate architecture is been invading uh, the city with these high rises. The buildings look exactly the same. They don't have any conscience to the environment. Are these black boxes with no features? And they are luxurious. They are asking for a lot of money for the monthly rent, but they are responding to uh, rampant capitalism. Many developers are building buildings because they can maximize the site and get, you know, X number of units out of that site. And many times they're just boxes with more boxes in them and, and they don't really have a design characteristics that fit in the neighborhood, that add value to the neighborhood. They're just something that looks like it's plopped on there. We need to be very careful with uh, people who are not as privileged. And this is where in my professional practice and in my academic life, I am into social innovation. And that is what I uh, make a call to for social innovation. And they will have to be very creative in giving housing to people with different incomes, uh, housing for people with different uh, family structures. There's only one major Fortune 500 company in San Diego. And right now in San Diego, where what used to be 25 to 30% of your income being spent on housing, is now 50 to 60% of your income being spent on housing. And and I, as that gets worse, then homelessness picks up. In order to afford to live in San Diego, you're gonna to have to have a job that pays you that much. You know, where will they find those those marketplace jobs? And, and that really becomes one of the most critical issues in the housing conversation. We also need to get used to the new technologies because of that places to sleep might be smaller, but then we compensate with places for social activities. So there will be more communal kitchens, more communal working, more communal activities where people can engage with the use of technology. And I think that prefabrication will play an important role in the future and 3D fabrication. We need to, to start developing new approaches, new techniques, new products, new materials. We need other opportunities because it, it then housing becomes an asset and not a home. So I found that we need to look at, when we think about housing the next 1 million, we gotta look at all of these stratas. We do not need to build any more single family housing units. We no longer should be building one unit per lot. It's gonna take a few people who are out there and they're, what they do is, is proven to work well and pretty soon you'll have everybody following their model. I guess it's the optimistic look that, you know, hopeful ever after. The architects and the designers really need to get more involved more broadly. You were part of the AIA issuing the agenda for the next mayor. And it talked about greater involvement in the community planning process, greater involvement in the discussions that go on about the design of housing, where housing should go, how it should go. And I think designers have a lot to offer. 
they have to participate. They, they have to do more than just throw their hands up and say, I'll just design what the guy tells me to do, to do because I need to have that contract. Who you represent and how you represent people is, is a critical issue. And we as designers can speak to what we know about from a design standpoint or from the things that we have studied. It's hard to say that we can speak for people who can't speak for themselves. Unless we really get involved and engage with those people that we become their trusted representatives or their trusted spokesmen. I believe that now it's your responsibility to grab and embrace the opportunities that you have. <laughs>